And I believe it's important that I start my speech today with the right words said in the right ways. And I have just had my first lesson. I won't be as good as the Cahir look in relation to delivering his fluency. I look at my notes and I will try my best. And to people watching in, um, I would encourage everybody to try and learn a few words in sign. I've had, um, it's been very enriching, to be honest with you. So here goes. So what I say to you is, I'm delighted to be here today to talk to you on this very important occasion. And I am proud to speak a few words in the Irish sign language. And it is one of Ireland's unique and native recognised languages. And this is something to be celebrated. <clears throat> and we are approaching the third anniversary of the passage of the Irish Sign Language and will shortly commence the Act. The commencement of the Act is a milestone moment for the Irish Sign Language population, for whom this is one of the most important pieces of legislation ever passed in this country. However, each and every one of us should share in celebrating this moment. At the end of this most difficult year, we are here the opportunity to recognise, celebrate and commit to support our unique, native and independent language. And it is my pleasure to confirm to the House today that a commencement order is being finalised and will commence the Act on the 23rd of December. I will therefore, th therefore take this opportunity to give a brief overview of the progress in the key areas relating to the Act. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge all those who work in calling for the realisation this Act has been so important in the journey to its commencement. Unfortunately, time does not allow me to go through the long list here. As you will be aware, the Act places an obligation on public bodies to do all that is reasonable to ensure that they provide ISL users with free interpretation when availing of or seeking to access statutory entitlements and services. Secretary Generals are being reminded of this fact and encouraged to remind their staff and their agencies for which they are responsible. The fulfilling of this duty will require that there are sufficient numbers of accredited inter interpreters available. The Department of Social Protection, working with the Citizens Information Board and the Sign Language Interpreting Service, has taken steps to ensure that this becomes a reality. A company has been established to maintain a register of the Irish Sign Language interpreters and to develop a quality assurance scheme which will strengthen and guarantee the quality of ISL provision. The Department of Social Protection is piloting a NAP which will allow access to interpreters via phones and other devices. This is an exciting opportunity and I look forward to seeing it work for the ISL users and can be expanded to be part of our suite of options for them. The Department of Social Protection is also responsible for a voucher scheme which will allow ISL users to book and avail of interpre interpreters to ensure that they have access to them when participating in cultural, social and educational events. 
This is key to removing barriers that, that deaf people experience in engaging in their community and enjoying access to the arts and other important activities. I understand that the voucher scheme is well advanced, but that COVID-19 has impacted the readiness of the scheme chair. However, I also understand that this will be realised over the course of 2021. Equal access to justice is a key for, to our society. For many years, our courts have arranged and paid for sign language interpreters where required in family law and criminal cases. For civil proceedings, the protocol has been that lignant cover the costs of interpre interpreters themselves. The legislation ensures that the practice in family and criminal proceedings becomes an obligation for the state. As a result, the court services will be required to arrange and bear the costs of ISL interpretation in civil proceedings. The court service is committed to implementing this responsibility. In the education of our young ISL users and their families, the Department of Education and the National Council for Special Education are ensuring that there is an ISL tuition scheme available to families and the dedicated visiting teachers support the work of class teachers. For our teachers, Dublin City University has an ISL Bachelors of Education course that enables deaf and hard of hearing people who use ISL to enter primary teaching. This is a significant step in ensuring increased access and inclusion for all in the classroom. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the ISL interpreters who have supported the Department of Health nightly briefings on COVID. They are a crucial part of the communication of key policy health message and confirm once again the Act's importance. Realising the transformation envisaged in the ISL Act will take time. I celebrate the progress made, but I do recognise that there is more to be done. As the person now charged with the duties of the Minister for Disabilities, I would like to emphasise here today my commitment to ensuring that the Act is fully implemented as soon as possible. I believe strongly in the goal of the ISL users to participate fully in Irish society, as is their right. Garamakas.